Roger once again shaking down the 5G examination of what does it do, how does it work, what does it react with, what's the effect on the substance that it reacts with, is the substance that it reacts with damaged or is it affected in any way whatsoever other than the normal effect of light bouncing off of something. In the last video I showed what 5G is and, and they're talking about between 5 and 15 gigahertz which is not in the in the correct spectrum to be absorbed by the earth it does not want it here it's, it does not come through the atmosphere it is repelled by our atmosphere and I would think that might have something to do with its effect on on life on the surface now it may even be created by the Sun in order to kill off what's in the outer atmosphere. That's not out of the question. But how does it react with us and wh why are we forcing it through the atmosphere which does not want it to go through the atmosphere so you have to enhance it a little bit and do this and that which I explained in the last video. And I really don't know the ins and outs of this. I'm, I'm having a hard time finding out exactly how it's generated, what the intensities are, all that business. Uh, you know, I really haven't looked so deeply. I've looked more into what the range of frequencies effects. I really don't even care how much, well we know it's transmitting, we know it's getting from point A to point B, so that's not a, even a question. So it's hitting you, case closed. Now, what is it doing to you? This is Carillion photography. Now what does that mean? Carillion photography is a method that injects a, a, a high frequency energy field around things. And the things react with that field and the ether that is in the air. What is happening here? That key is being energized. Its molecules inside are being energized and shaken so that they are just actually jumping into the air. It's, it's just you can see it. There's no question what's happening there. Same thing here, here, and here. Now, let's look a little closer at the hands and I will show you why I can make these statements and how they're they're uh, unimpeachable. First of all, this is how it works. You take a high voltage plate here, really. It's a, uh, um, you take high voltage and you, you put a plant or a leaf or whatever you want onto the surface in this field. And then through certain photographic techniques, you, you get the impression of what is happening with the high voltage and it's displayed in colors that indicate it's it's um it's leaving as as energy from whatever is absorbing these frequencies and shaking it so violently that it's sending off electrons into the air. All right, this is my hand logo, and it's dense with blood. Obviously, you can see what's happening. You have a vein and an artery, vein and an artery, vein and an artery. One comes in, one comes back. There's a web of vessels that go between here and there. Now, their service, you can see, uh, artery, vein, 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 artery, 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 artery. The red blood comes across here to the vein side, it gets sucked back up, and this is the vein side of this one. They merge together, they go back up to the hand. Now, in and there's little spots in all of these areas where there's creases, they're closer to the surface of the skin, and where they actually are at the top, they the arterial ones will explode out of hands and so forth because there's so much pressure under the body in the body when things die in normal conditions. In in the mud fossils, not quite so much, but well, I can show you one right here that was DNA tested that did uh, exactly that. It blew out from the arterial side. You see this? If you show that to a uh, an anatomist, he'll understand that is a distal phalanges pattern. That little black stuff. That's what they call a bone silhouette, and it's of the distal phalanges. This is a highly degraded fingertip. It was much bigger, and I have a, the twin to it, which was not eroded. And you see here, that's where the, the uh, you see up there the sides? They're on the sides and on the tip. On the sides and on the tip, they blow out. 
okay, the, the vein is here, and it's over here too, the vein is over on this side, they don't blow out because they have clamps to seal off, and that's why the vein tube is still there, you see, and that's the artery side. Now, that finger uh, was uh, uh, DNA certified, and uh, the bone is actually, you can see the pattern of the bone, if you look carefully, it comes up and around here. But I, ha I do have the twin to it, and another part that eroded away from uh, one of these, which is the distal uh, apical tuft that actually sits at the tip of this. And all of the little tendon balls invest into these little holes in here, and that's how you can turn, you know, move your fingertips. And I do have the, um, I have the palm and all that stuff. I think I show that at some point, or have shown. I mean, I have videos of, of showing it, and it's, uh, it's, uh, there's no question about it. It's DNA certified and anatomist uh, certified, and it's, um, it's what it is. Plus, there's been CAT scans done on it. Now. So this is what we're looking about as far as blood in the hand. Now, let's go look at, at the Carillion. You saw my hand logo. You saw where the blood vessels all came out. Now, why is it streaming out from where the blood vessels are? That's where the transition metals are. That's where the most fluid is. That's where the high conductivity is. Those transition metals literally are semiconductors. That's what they are. That's the kind of stuff they use in the semiconductor industry. I was in that industry, and I know how transistors and diodes and zener diodes and capacitors and all that stuff work. And they work by shaking the molecules or invading another molecule space. And then you have either a forward bias or reverse bias. Now, what does that mean? That means I can reverse bias you and say, get out of here. Or I can forward bias you and say, come on, you just a couple of you guys come, and I will have hundreds of guys join you. That's what a transistor does. When you click the base of a transistor, it says, okay, I'm going to send a couple guys coming this way. That means that they're going to open the doors for you. That's all it is, a forward bias. It opens the doors, and then where you had a collection of electrons, it says, okay, come on, guys, and away it goes. And that is what's happening here. You shaking these electrons, say, where am I going to go? Well, well, I don't know. Just go in the air, just jump off of here. And they're going to come out of your blood. That is what's happening. So, there's certain... Now, and, and my point being here is I've been saying right along, these transition metals are the things that make you healthy or they make you sick. Either you, you have, don't have enough of them or you have too much of them or you have the right amount of them and then you are healthy. It's like Goldilocks. Right? Now, that's all I can tell you. And it's, it's so obvious that, 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 that anybody can see this. And, and, it's, and it's not something that can't be looked at. So if I could see what the color of this is and the intensity of these frequencies and, and, and adjust into certain frequencies that shake different frequencies to make different colors, I believe, and, oops, and to make, well, oh my God. <laughs> oh, I should leave this in. This is just, this is priceless. How did this happen? <laughs> oh, let me see. Click. <laughs> oh, Curly and Kissinger. <laughs> oh my God. All right, I, I got to get myself under control here. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm making a big joke out of this. But there is some, some seriousness that started to flow from this to me. Now, this was an accepted behavior. Accepted behavior. I mean, when I was younger, well, you know, you, you, you didn't. I never raped anybody. I never forced anybody to do anything they didn't want to do. So I feel totally vindicated. But I was not. I was sort of a, you know, I kidded around and did this and that, and it might have been taken wrong by some people, I'm sure it was, and, and, and I think that is a natural human behavior, and, of, uh, and especially people that are in a dominant position, they can become dominant and they dominate. Now, as it once was accepted, obviously, in this sort of manner, as like always kind of cute, well, it is a lot of people found it extremely offensive, and then the ones that were raped and forced to have a legitimate legal 
retribution against someone that did this but they've never been able to bring it forward and why because they were not they didn't have a way to do it and how can we address that that is the key because i don't care what you do it's me too me too well that's good how what are you going to do about it how are you going to address that what are you going to do about the future how about the people coming up there's going to be a lot of me too's unless you get some way of addressing this in a in a manner that that oversees it from a root cause and a root cause is literally nature i mean come on be honest sexual nature is sexual nature it just happens however domination and 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 terrorizing and control by someone that you trust and someone who takes advantage of you in in a, in, in an extreme way that should not be allowed, and that has to be addressed, and the only way it can be addressed is legally. And how are you going to do this legally? Because you do not have the money. How are you going to get the money? You accuse your accusers. I mean, you accuse the ones that, that violated you. You accuse them, and you force them to pay into a fund that oversees this in the future. That is the way out of this. All right? They will be punished. You can't go and destroy them, really, honestly. In all fairness, think about this now. A lot of these people didn't really think they were just the worst people on the face of the earth. The ones that raped and forced, different. The ones that were just sort of like, you know, somewhat cloddish, let's call it. And, 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 and you know, I mean, I'm sure the women found it absolutely repulsive. However... It was a culture. It was a culture. Now that we've got to stop that culture. And once somebody became a dominator and became a, a controller and became strong and, and, and knew that they had that power, they became weak and used it. Those people need to pay a penalty. And the only penalty that will stop this from keeping happening in the future is to create a fund to stop this and the same thing with the students going after the you know, NRA and all that business they have to stop that line of thought and they have to go after the money that funds politics they have to say that everything has to be played out on c-span YouTube videos can go up about people's positions and so forth and and, and it can be organized by parties and so forth up there, but it has to play out up there with equal access and, and, and not lobbying in the back rooms and not backdoor shuffling so many years that you work for the government and then you go into private stuff. You cannot work for the contractors that you dealt with, something like that. It's got to be straightened out. And then we can get an equal footing on this government because it's going, it's going very badly, very quickly. That's my recommendation. Try to fix a few things, but you got to go to the root. If you do not go to the root, it grows back, and it will grow back just like unbelievable from every single angle that it can find. And that's what every, happens every time.